Hello and welcome back to the video lectures for the geodynamics course on the topic of flexure of the lithosphere. In this, the third of the video lectures on this topic, we'll look at deflection of a simple elastic plate. And basically we're going to look at two different scenarios. And the goals of the lecture will be basically to present the calculations for the deflection of an elastic plate that's acted upon by either an applied torque, in this case it's a simple single torque acting at the free end of a plate with the other end fixed, and the other case is an end load. So this is a vertical load applied just to one end of the plate, and you'll see from the figures what we're talking about. Okay, here's our picture for the first case. We have an uh, elastic plate here, it's fixed to the wall, embedded in the wall here, and it's of some length L, and the X axis is going along its length. I'm going to apply a torque at the end of this plate, uh, and we're going to consider the plate to have no weight. It's a weightless plate, it has no load acting along its length, and it has no shear forces, and there's also no longitudinal or axial force. This is about as simple as we can make it. And so the only thing, as I've mentioned, is that we're going to apply a torque at the free end of this um, elastic plate. If we go here then to the picture, on the left side is basically the kind of picture of what we're doing. On the right side is our force and torque balance. We can see here that the shear forces are zero and there's nothing else, there's no Q or anything like that. But since we're applying a torque at this end of uh, MA at the location X equals L, then there must be a torque at the other end to balance the torque that's being applied. In this case, the deflection um, can be calculated, and you could do that using the equation from the previous uh, video lecture. Um, and what you would come up with is a deflection that looks like this, where W is equal to minus M. A, so this is our torque that's applied, times x squared, divided by 2 times d, which again, d is the flexural rigidity of this plate. That's going to be an elastic um, material property of the plate itself. Now, it's been a few video lectures since we had a chance for you to pause the video and think about things a little bit. But now is a first opportunity in this video lecture to pause the video and think about the question, what would the geometry look like? for this particular scenario. What kind of geometry would we expect for the deflected plate in this scenario? So go ahead and pause the video and unpause it when you think you've got an answer. Okay, well, hopefully you've come up with uh, something along these lines. We can see here that our deflection W is going to be a function of M, which is a constant, D, which is a material property of the plate, and can be considered a constant in that case. And then x squared is our only variable. So the deflection is going to vary as a function of x squared. Now, if you remember from um, sort of a basic geometry class, if you've got a deflection that's equal to something like the distance along the axis squared, that's going to take the form of a parabolic or a parabola shaped uh, deflection. So in this case, we would expect that by applying a torque at the end of our beam, we should get something, if I took my ruler and did the same thing, that looks kind of like a parabola or half of a parabola with the free end uh, being turned up and the fixed end stuck in the, um, into the wall in this case. Okay, so that was our first case of an applied torque. Now we're going to look at another really simple scenario. Uh, in this case, what we're going to do is apply a vertical load at the end of the beam. So instead of applying uh, a torque at the end of the plate, we're going to apply a line load at the free end of the plate. And so if we were in the ruler world, and this was our fixed end, and this was the free end, we're just going to push down vertically at one end of the plate. We have no load uh, because there is no load in this case Q. The plate is again weightless, um, and the only load is at this x equals L where the line load is applied. <coughs> and um, 
in this case, it's a shear force that's acting upon that end because it's um, acting um, along the free end of the uh, of the plate, like that. And again, there's no axial or longitudinal force P. In this case, the deflection looks a little bit um, different. We have, in this case, W equals uh, VA, which our shear force um, times x squared divided by 2D. That actually looks a lot like our previous case for a torque. But then there's an extra term here, and that's uh, where we multiply by L minus x over 3. That comes from the uh, torque balance. So when we apply this shear force at this end of the uh, elastic plate, it results in a torque at the other end, um, as well as a shear force that is balancing. So that torque takes the form of uh, minus VA L minus X. So if we look at this geometry um, and compare to what we saw in the previous case, how would it be different? How might it be a little bit different than our past um, example? So I'll ask you again to pause the video and think about that for just a moment and come back when you think you have an answer. Okay, well, let's see what you came up with. In this case, we have something similar where we're going to say our deflection, W, should be something like a parabola because we have an x squared term here, but we also then multiply by the length minus x over 3. And so what that's going to do is for very small values of x, this term is going to be small, and as x gets bigger, this term will get a little bit smaller. And that's going to basically result in the case where we start out like a parabola, but because that end of the plate is free, if you can look at the <coughs> ruler here, the <coughs> torque case had a lot of curvature near where the torque was applied, and in this case, by pushing down here, we'll actually see that the plate will be a little bit straighter at that end. So it will start out looking like a parabola, and then the end of the beam, the end of the plate, will be more like a straight line. <coughs> All right, so it's quiz time once again. So go ahead and uh, see what you've learned in the quiz in Moodle, and come back for the next video lecture where we finally start getting into some of the more interesting geological examples.